Hi there, and uh, this time I'm looking at um, the Jan Vermeer, the famous milkmaid. And we're going to talk about luminosity in this image, and uh, we're also going to talk about how the colour composition supports the uh, luminosity. Um, I think this picture is probably, you know, rightly so famous and so successful because of the rendering of natural light which Vermeer was able to achieve and um, the uh, you know the, the, it's the classic situation of the window light streaming in from the window across the wall uh, illuminating these objects on LHS and falling across the uh, this kind of still life composition of the uh, the pouring of the milk and the bread and uh, I think we uh, we think that uh, she's making some kind of bread maybe a bread and butter pudding or something like that here uh, but of course, the um, crowning glory of the painting is the way he's rendered the light falling onto the figure of the milkmaid herself. And I think this is uh, this is what makes the uh, painting so powerful and so affecting. Just this treatment of natural light falling onto the woman's face and. Uh, her garments. If we uh, zoom in to the point where we can begin to look at Vermeer's brushwork and the um, techniques he's using, uh, we can see quite clearly how he's, for example, on this, um, on her sort of headscarf how he's applied white paint in these areas uh, like so uh, to create these these very strong highlights and obviously here as well um, so I mean th th there's nothing terribly surprising about that and, and obviously on her forehead here what is rather interesting is when we we look closely at the painting and we begin to notice these sort of spots and dabs of uh, white or you know cream shades of white uh, which he's added in and, and the way he's used the used his brushwork to create these highlights uh, when you when you look at it close up it looks quite in some ways quite crude but of course it's incredibly effective uh, in the context of the whole image um, we can see that he's used um, you know a fairly sort of strong kind of impasto technique here on on this um, this area of her collar and um, if we come out and just move down um, one of the things that I think is so interesting is the way we can see that he's he's employed what is really almost a sort of pointillist technique where he's added these kind of uh, dots and daubs of lighter colored paint. Uh, uh, for example, here, also very noticeable here. Uh, and these highlights that he's created around the edge of the the pitcher from which she's pouring the milk um, 
these are quite striking. And when we come down to look at the bread on the table uh, in close up, once again, you'd be able to see the way he's he's made extensive use of this kind of pointillism, where he's just applied these dots and daubs of lighter colored paint. Um, also here on the on the jug, he's he's created these kind of clusters of daubs of light. Um, and these have all contributed to the um, highly luminous effect. Here on the edge of the, this is just the edge of the part of the um, uh, sort of handle of this basket. And here he's, he's applied these dots and daubs again to uh, and over here as well on this handle, he's used this technique quite heavily. Um, if we look here on this um, this piece of blue fabric, which has just sort of casually been placed on the table, uh, again we can see he's used these these little dots to create these highlights, these little spots of light. Um, I'm not sure whether this is this this area. This represents a garment that she's taken off because because it matches the this sort of um, skirt, sort of overskirt she's got on. In fact, she was wearing this around her shoulders before she started work or something like that. Um, another area which I think is interesting is the arm here. If we zoom into the arm, we can see what, to my eyes anyway, appears to be a fairly crude um, series of uh, brush gestures where he's He's added luminosity onto this this upper area of her arm, uh, and this, the, 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 if you like, the sort of blending between this area and this uh, highlighted area isn't actually terribly good to my eyes, but uh, but I think you know once again in the context of the. Uh, the sort of overview of the image as a uh, composition and uh, in, in terms of the way that the luminosity works overall um, it is highly effective if we uh, just put a threshold layer on um, this is quite interesting once again threshold enables us to see this kind of luminosity map of the image and I think if you look at this, you, 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 can, you can fairly easily spot the fact that we've got, obviously, the window is the light source. And then we've got, we can think perhaps of almost a sort of kind of triangular area where the, the luminosity is thrown across the subject and the uh, the surrounding environment and, and scene uh, that she's involved in. Um, we can see that the way that Vermeer has handled the uh, gradation of luminosity between, the, for example, this area of the wall, and as the light begins to spread across the wall, um, I think we will probably all agree is that this is absolutely masterful the way he's done this. And he's we can see that he's added some he's done some work in this area where he seems to have just he's he's kind of scratched on some sort of white marks which I think have helped this kind of gradation along. Uh, and there are some, these marks here, quite sort of random 
again, spotting highlights quite randomly applied there. I'm not entirely sure about them. But I suppose what I want you to, you know, to focus on is if you just think in terms of the the way the light moves from the window across the sort of shadowed area and um, yeah, it's effectively created this marvellous gradient which gradually moves across the wall uh, and um, I think is extremely effective. Here also on this, this is kind of metallic uh, basket or something here. He's added in some uh, some highlights to just cause this. This is just reflecting the light on this, what I think is a kind of metal uh, metal object. So uh, I mean, overall, I mean, uh, you don't need me to tell you that this this is a stunningly successful composition in terms of. Uh, the way he's handled the luminosity and, and the way he's he's told uh, told his story about what she's doing and uh, you know the, the the environment and the sort of whole atmosphere of it. Um, if we think about uh, the kind of things that we might do, actually, I, I've I've had a curve on there. Well, I was just experimenting with the kind of thing we might do in Photoshop with our own images today would be to perhaps we might want to adjust luminosity on the face. Um, Or we might want to, um, I'll just drop that back to uh, how it was. Um, but of course, it, it's incredibly important, I think, in this kind of image that we, we preserve. If we add luminosity, we've really got to preserve the balance between uh, luminosity and shadow, which is what makes it effective. Um, here, for example, I've, I've just experimented with adding a filter, a kind of um, DLC filter, which I would use extensively in a portrait image. Uh, and this gives us, you know, the opportunity to do what Vermeer could not do, um, which is to just very easily uh, affect the distribution of light. And here, as I toggle this off and on again, you can see that this has had the effect of kind of drawing the light in to this area, sort of sucking the light in to, uh, to focus it on the subject more. But uh, interesting to experiment with. I, I don't think that, uh, I don't think I'm going to be improving on Vermeer's work anytime soon. Um, another thing which I thought was rather interesting was I um, I just popped the image into Adobe Color, um, and uh, the analysis of of the color in the image which came back, uh, I've just I've just created this kind of inset uh, uh, and popped it onto the painting, and I think you can see here how the colors. Um, uh, from from top to bottom work incredibly well to um, you know we're, we're, we're kind of creating this um, uh, I suppose what we might think of as a kind of diagonal which is going from the the, the most luminous area of the painting, which is really this top right corner, down across the subject, down across the sort of still life composition, and, and finishing off in what is uh, the, the, the sort of really the darkest area of the image, which is this fabric of the tablecloth. And I think this 
um, this kind of colour map from uh, this is from Adobe Colour, as I say. This sort of shows us very clearly how Vermeer's use of colour uh, amplifies and supports uh, the way he's dealt with the luminosity. As the luminosity um, moves down and reduces towards this corner, the colour tones support that. So we begin with these very sort of light colour tones and we move down and we get the we get the white of her head covering, we get the the flesh tones, we get the highlight of the collar, we get this more sort of yellowish uh, tones on the sort of bodice. And then we move into these sort of slightly darker greens. And then we encounter this sort of really rich, vibrant blue, which is quite dark, you know, particularly down here. Uh, and then we have these elements in the, uh, these sort of luminous elements in the, um, what is really the kind of uh, still life composition. Uh, and then we have these much darker areas down here. Uh, and as the luminosity uh, diminishes, so the colours become darker and more intense. And I think that, you know, for me, that is, um, I suppose, is part of the real genius of this, uh, of this colour composition which Vermeer has created. Uh, so, that's it really. Uh, just inspecting, examining the Vermeer, thinking about the way he's used luminosity, thinking about some of the techniques he's used to get his effect, uh, and looking at how he's used um, colour as well to create this uh, truly extraordinary painting. And um, the, I suppose the... Uh, the reason I talk about this is that I think that as we're considering our own images and our photographs and considering our editing and retouch efforts, um, we can learn an enormous amount from studying uh, you know, this kind of thing, like a, a classic old master like Vermeer, if we... Uh, uh, particularly since we now have these very high-res photographs, so we can examine them at the sort of brushwork level. So there we are. I uh, hope that's interesting for you, and uh, look forward to talking to you soon.